warning, in this video I review a keyboard that's very bad. For those of you who would like to keep their vocabulary as small as possible, you should consider stopping the video immediately. You might learn new words you never even knew existed, such as fuck, or shit, or piss stain licking clunge waffle. You have been warned. Hello and welcome to this review of my Logostar KU450, which is a rebranded version of a Copam K450. I've been truly dreading this day because jumping Jehoshaphat on a fucking pogo stick, this thing is appalling. I bought it on eBay, new in box, for $14 and I've had it for absolute ages. I've just been too afraid to review it. This is technically an excellent deal for reasons I'll get to in a bit, and I appreciate the keyboard as a collector, but as a human being, let alone a keyboard user, holy shit, I wish I'd never laid a finger on this gruesome horror. The fuckness factor stems mainly from the switches, which are a type of spring over membrane design with a built in clicker. They made number 9 on my worst switches of all time video, and there are some pretty tough contenders on that list, so being on it is no joke. I mean, not even Cherry MX Brown made it to that list, so they're really sharing a bunk with the lowest, foulest, most detestable rubbish ever invented. The switches consist of a pusher clipped into a slider with a coil spring between them to extend the pusher outwards, and this arrangement presses down on a standard triple set of membranes. In order to make the slider come back up again, it's got an external coil spring, and there's a small recess in the barrel plate for an Alps-style click leaf, which provides a tactility and the clicky noise. It's probably what people would describe as a mecha membrane switch, similar to Razer's design, although unlike Razer mecha membrane, it doesn't use rubber domes, has a much thicker click noise, and the click leaf itself does actually impart tactility rather than being there just to make some noise. Now when I reviewed the Razer Ornata, which came with those switches, I basically tore it a battery of fresh anal orifices, and in theory its design should be much more loathsome than the Copam's. After all, all this really is is a barely even glorified rubber dome keyboard, while the Copam avoids the use of rubber domes and comes with a superficially decent click leaf. But lo and behold, it's actually even worse. The key feel is so bad that it's almost beyond description. Ah. And I genuinely mean that because it's really difficult to describe exactly what it is that makes this keyboard feel like such a nameless, unutterable rampart of perdition. Jesus, touch typing Christ on that KB101A, it's bleeding awful, just get it away from me. The key feel feels unnaturally short, I'm not sure the travel actually is any shorter than other keyboards, but the bottom out feel is so spongy, scratchy and resistive that it instills an almost claustrophobic sense into the user. If I had to come up with one word to describe the bottom out feel of these switches, I'd probably go with inaccessible or granity. The click is solid, that's the one part they managed to get down well, and the tactility is definitely there, but it's really, really rough and kind of bulky and feels almost like an afterthought. The click even feels somehow disconnected from the key feel, it's absolutely bizarre. Lovecraft would probably have described it as non-Euclidean. And on top of that, it's too stiff, super scratchy, and it binds pretty badly as well. And keep in mind that this is a new old stock keyboard, I can't even imagine what a shit-sucking spectacle a used or dirty one must be. Surprisingly, the board itself is actually built rather well. It's not a particularly small specimen at 49 centimeters, or 1 and 607 999 feet for the podophiles among us, but that's somewhat average for a vintage full-size keyboard, and especially considering it's a membrane keyboard with a plastic barrel plate and plastic case, it's strikingly heavy at 1.8 kilos, which really took me by surprise. Not sure how much 1.8 kilos is in toes or forearms or imperial dicks or whatever appendage is measured in across the pond, but I'm sure you guys can work it out. The weight comes almost entirely from a metal backplate that forms the backbone of the sensing assembly. It's really thick, 1.3 millimeters, and it weighs a ton. Moreover, it's screwed to the barrel plate, which is a nice touch compared to the riveted assembly that the IBM Model M has, which, remember, is also a membrane keyboard. The rest of the keyboard has a very average build, but that assembly is one of the tougher ones I've seen so far. As long as that plastic barrel frame holds, it could probably withstand a lot of punishment and still work. 
It's rather old. As you can see from this date stamp inside the case, it was made in 13 million and 4 BC, making it by quite some margin the oldest keyboard in my collection. In light of this, I guess in a way I can't blame it too much for its shortcomings, because it must have been really revolutionary for its time. But still, in this day and age, I'd stay the fuck away from it if I could. It also has really nice keycaps. They're thin ABS, but they are double shots, which is the best printing method, with Helvetica, which is the best looking keyboard font in my opinion, and it's got lovely red Cyrillic sublegends. They're silk screened, but razor sharp, and they look absolutely fantastic. And considering they're also MX mount and brand new, I'm sure these alone are worth the $14 I paid for it. If anything, they feel completely wasted on this membranous monstrosity from the Stygian Abyss. I mean, just look at it, how cool is that? Fuck that RGB noise, this is where it's at. As the badge, which is metal by the way, so Norse, reads, Copam OEM'd it for a company called Logostar, which I can find virtually nothing about except in an image of a floppy disk with Logostar on it, and even that has a different logo. Finally, a somewhat peculiar trait is that it has an ISO style enter key, but the left shift is full size rather than the small one you'd normally find on ISO keyboards. I got enough of someone in Slovak here, but I don't think that the layout is Slovak, because that's normally Quartz based on like the Germans. Well, this one is QWERTY, and I'm pretty sure the Slovak language isn't based on the Cyrillic script either. Overall, the keyboard is an interesting collector's piece, very well built in some ways even, and the keycaps are gorgeous. But fuck me blind and gag me with a spoon, the typing feel is... HIDEOUS! I mean, whatever guys, but it's all fun and games until someone touches a copam. What a complete milk-queefing fanny flap this thing is. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard. Oh dear.